Capitalism made America great. Free markets, innovation, hard work. The building blocks of the American dream. But in the wrong hands, some of those dreams can turn into nightmares. Wall Street's corporate raiders made billions of dollars. Private equity leaders getting rich at the expense of American workers. Their greed was only matched by their willingness to do anything to make millions in profits. Nothing was spared, nothing mattered but greed. This film is about one such raider and his firm. Mitt Romney became CEO of Bain Capital the day the company was formed. His mission? To reap massive rewards for himself and his investors. Mitt Romney, them guys, they don't care who I am. He's for small businesses. No, he isn't. He, he's not. You're going to be on the hit list, you know that. Romney took foreign seed money from Latin America and began a pattern exploiting dozens of American businesses. They fire people, they cut benefits, they sell assets. But okay, let's look deeper. Let's look deeper in his life. What did he do when he was the CEO of this holding company? This film will highlight just four of Romney's many targets. Four businesses and the thousands of employees who work there. And that hurt so bad to leave my home because of one man that's got 15 homes. He's tearing down his 3,000 square foot house to build an 11,000 square foot house. I feel that is the man that destroyed us. I am intimately familiar with how our economy works. Everything corporations earn ultimately goes to people. So where do you think it goes? <laughs> A story of greed, playing the system for a quick buck. A group of corporate raiders led by Mitt Romney. More ruthless than Wall Street. For tens of thousands of Americans, the suffering began when Mitt Romney came to town. The company was Bain Capital, its CEO and president, a privileged son of a wealthy businessman and politician, Mitt Romney. He had a Harvard pedigree and he was on a tear, making spectacular returns. Stripping American businesses of assets, selling everything to the highest bidder, and often killing jobs for big financial rewards. One stop on Mitt Romney's quest, Mariana, Florida. For more than 50 years, the Unimac Corporation had steadily built an American workforce, becoming the largest commercial laundry equipment manufacturer in North America. It was a pretty much a, a family-ran organization. Everybody knew everybody, and um, they cared. They cared about their employees. Everybody was in it for the quality, trying to build a good product. Because I mean, it's. Part of your name was on it. They met with everybody, pulled everybody together, and told us uh, we were being sold to uh, uh, Raytheon, and which in turn turned out to be Bain. Back at his Massachusetts headquarters, Romney had found his target. Bain took control of Unimac. One of the first things that they did when they uh, when they started uh, when we became part of the corporation was to start cheapening the product. So you'd have to hurry faster through your work, and the quality was going down. It got to the point where we would run out of parts trying to push so many out that sometimes we'd send a machine out without a part on it. You know, I just wish they'd left us alone back in the early 90s and would be making a lot of washing machines and, and good ones. If they, if they would have just left us alone as Unimac, I think Unimac would still be running right now mm -hmm. as Unimac and still have probably more than 500 employees by now. 
According to New York Magazine, Romney's Bain colleagues had a high disdain for American businesses and their workers, describing them as sloppy and lazy. One of the very first orders of business for Romney's Bain team slash paychecks while keeping the workers in the dark. We were worried that uh, we weren't going to have a job. By that time, we had already had a three-year-old. I was stressed out all the time because I never knew if I was going to have a job when I came in the next day. And we had insurance there. We both worked there. So when we got, you know, if we was let go, we both was let go at the same time. Neither one of us had a job. And then at the, uh, at the very end, they decided to uh, shut the doors. I was scared, <laughs> very scared. Shortly after that, in December of 07, my daughter was uh, diagnosed with leukemia. It was real scary, you know, because that was one of the things we worried about is dropping our insurance and going out on our own and, you know, not having insurance with a job. It was really scary, so. Romney and Bain upended the company and gutted the workforce. Now they were ready to make a handsome profit. They did sell us. We were sold to... A teacher's union out of Canada. Mm -hmm. What does teachers know about washing machines? Romney and Bain's sale to the Canadians netted a whopping 230% profit for Romney and his investors. The deal left behind a trail of wreckage. I'm convinced that if you want to create jobs, it helps to have had a job. And I've had jobs. And I'll use that experience to help America. They, they never could get enough. No matter how much they, no matter how much they already had, they just could never get enough money. For an economy to thrive, there are a lot of people who, who will suffer as a result of that. For Tracy and Tommy Jones, their brush with Mitt Romney and Bain nearly tore their family apart. We did, we lost our insurance, we didn't have any income, and it was very stressful, and it took a strain on our marriage. Your whole lifestyle changed, because you're making this much, now you're making this much, and, and your a lot of adjustments. And your bills are still up here, and your income's still down here. And yeah. it's, it's very bad, it's very stressful. Romney and Bain's cash rampage would ultimately slash jobs in nearly every state in the country like popular children's toy seller, KB Toys. Where are you going to find all the hottest toys? On the planet Mars? No! On a mountaintop? Uh-uh! Hot big at KB Toys. Romney and Bain bought the 80-year-old company in 2000, loaded KB Toys with millions in debt, then used the money to repurchase Bain's stock. The debt was too staggering. By 2004, 365 stores had closed. The company is shutting down all of its stores. The Attorney General is advising people to cash in those cards as soon as possible. As we told you just yesterday, the toy chain has filed for bankruptcy. Romney called it creative destruction. Creative destruction does enhance productivity for an economy to thrive, and as ours does, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who, who will suffer as a result of that. Romney and other top executives take $120 million. By 2009, the debt accumulated under Romney was too great. KB Toys was no more. <laughs> Make a profit. That's the name of the game, right? Mitt Romney and Bain saw a 900% return on their investment. Romney and Bain's profits at the expense of 15,000 jobs was described by the Boston Herald as disgusting. Mitt Romney's campaign boasts of the jobs the Republican presidential candidate created while running private equity firm Bain Capital. What it doesn't talk about is Romney's experience eliminating jobs. Under Romney, Bain was making billions at the same time, contributing to the greatest American job loss since World War II. It was called the Bain Way, 
Romney's Bain Capital almost always managing to turn the misfortunes of others into their own enormous financial gains. A striking example of this was a technology company Bain financed with facilities in Texas, Colorado, and California. The company was called DDI. With help from friends at Wall Street's Lehman Brothers, Bain was set to offer an initial public offering of stock in DDI. Lehman Brothers would issue a buy rating and Romney and Bain would watch investors swarm. A signature of Romney's Bain Way strategy, employees were quickly fired in order to pump up profits. Helped by a favorable rating from Bain's Wall Street friends, DDI's 12 million share IPO raised a quick $170 million. People were buying into the promise that DDI was headed to become a billion dollar company. Then, instead of sticking with the stock, Bain dumped it. Just after six months, Bain sold shares making $39 million. Then they dumped the rest just four months later, collecting $54 million more. All the while, the Wall Street banks they hired gave cover, issuing glowing reports. DDI ended up losing $400 million. A little over two years later, the stock was nearly worthless. The result? DDI filed for bankruptcy. 2,100 jobs were lost. Average investors without insider connections were left with huge losses. Romney denies being involved with the controversial deal, claiming to have left Bain to lead the 2002 Olympic Organizing Committee. Bonjour, je m'appelle Mitt Romney, et je suis président. But SEC filings prove otherwise. During the DDI deal, Romney is listed as a member of the management committee of Bain Capital with control of over 1.3 million shares of DDI Corporation. Sure enough, the probe uncovered evidence that Lehman Brothers continued to encourage investors to buy DDI stock, even though they had misgivings themselves. Romney's Bainway model played out over and over. Employees, creditors, and investors were hurt, but not Bain. Even though time and time again thousands of jobs were lost, investors and creditors were out hundreds of millions. Romney and Bain made piles of money. The vicious cycle would play itself out this time in America's heartland. Marion used to be such a booming town. We used to be a town full of industry. We were just like all family out there, you know. Really? And it changed. All right. <laughs> Overnight, it changed. It sure did. In 1992, an interesting prospect appeared on the Romney Bain radar. A paper company called Ampad with plants in Holyoke, Massachusetts, Buffalo, New York, and Marion, Indiana. The potential was there for Romney and his investors to reap a bonanza of cash, perhaps over a hundred million dollars. I think this company knew when they come in, they had no intention of keeping us. And they told us we'd been bought by Ampad and that we were all fired. Well, they said Ampad Corporation, but the guy that was in charge of the Ampad Corporation at that time was Mitt Romney. I was, I was pregnant at the time. And at the meeting, they told everybody that we had to, we were all fired, that we had to reapply for our jobs. We made appointments to do this hiring process. We went in and interviewed, and they would let us know yay or nay. Mine was a nay. Wow. We just knew we was going to have a job. They, you know, it was going to be OK for us until Ampad come in, and then that got very, very scary. Very scary. They just didn't want to cooperate with nobody, mm -hmm. did they? No cooperation at all. And then all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere, Ampad. And it really got greedy. It was 
not the way it should be. The whole, everybody was fired. And you know, when you're there all those years, a plant's been in Marion all those years and been sold the different times that we have. And we always went on the same. And then we have this company that comes in and destroys everything that we ever worked for. Romney's hatchet men moved in, firing some, rehiring others, slashing paychecks. Well, we had a pay cut. I was cut $2 on my wages. My husband and I raised a total of 10 children. And we still had a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old at home. And I thought, my gosh, how are we going to make it? While keeping a smaller workforce, Romney and Bain began executing a scheme the New York Times called Getting Back Your Bait, extracting hundreds of millions for himself and Bain investors by running up extraordinary debt. I think I was fortunate because I did have a husband that I could talk to. I cried a lot. It was tough getting through. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know if you were going to lose your house. You know, there was times that we did get foreclosure notices on our home. I am intimately familiar with how our economy works. I'm, uh, I'm working very hard to make sure that the, that the workers of this country have a brighter future. Well, I can tell you 250 to 300 people just about that will tell you how he did not fix the economy when he pulled the rug out from under our plant. A political misstep for Mitt Romney after he tells a crowd of unemployed workers that he's unemployed too. It's really easy to be unemployed when you have millions of dollars. Every evening I listen to the news and I get very upset. Some nights it don't pay me to listen to it. It's best that I just leave the TV off. Especially when a certain candidate for president that <laughs> takes my ticker. <laughs> In six months, over 200 of the employees Romney and Bain had rehired were all fired. The ones I felt really bad for was the husbands and wives that worked together at the same place. Now they've got absolutely nothing. Lula Gibson and her husband James were one such couple. They had a son in high school. I think the hardest part for me is the day that I we had the load up the U-Haul because we done lost our home and we was getting ready to leave and I turned around and I seen my home. I had no more. And that was hard. Very hard. For Shannon Conliffe, the emotional toll was hard on a new mother. It scared me. I mean, you know, my first Christmas with our first baby, and it was unsure. The fear of not being able to provide for your family. You know, people grew up in this area, and then they had to leave this area to find other employment. They left, you know, most of their family behind to start over. Oh, Christmas time. That used to be the biggest thing we'd have was our Christmas. And when you only got maybe two gifts for your kids, that hurt. You know, when they have families, they have little ones, their livelihoods was there. They were making a good wage. And this company comes in and they knock it all the way. They knock their wages down. They take their jobs away. And then eventually they close the plant. We had lots of uh, kids' college money. And we had to go through all that. Well, like people were losing homes and, you know, and the money they had saved, you know, they had to use it up. So you know, to survive, to live. For Romney, it was a score. 
Romney and Bain went on to make over $100 million from Ampad. Co corporations are people, my friend. We can raise taxes on... Of course they are. Everything corporations earn ultimately goes to people. Well, Bain's company was the holding company, and Mitt Romney was the one that was in there. And we feel like if he would have wanted to, he was in a position that he could have said, hey, these people still got time left. No, that was not the deal. They wanted the machinery. They didn't want us. And they got, and that's what they got. I think you care less about us the way I see it. Who am I? I'm Bob Sapp. Who, who, who Mitt Romney, them guys, they don't care who I am. Everything corporations earn ultimately goes to people. So, where do you think it goes? <laughs> what, what? Whose pockets? Whose pockets? People's pockets. Okay. To Romney and Bain Capital, it was just another deal. To others, it was a pit of despair. And there's times, you know, you just skip a meal so your kids could have something to eat. You know, it's amazing how many ways and how many meals you can do with one package of hot dogs you have to. You know, that was rough. Losing the house, losing the car. Wondering how you gonna pay your bill. Mitt Romney and Bain took a hit to their reputation, but not their wallets. He and Bain investors pocketed about $100 million. Romney had made himself rich beyond imagination. He went on to purchase a $3 million home in New Hampshire with a private beach and a $12 million beachfront property in California. Even that wasn't enough. Romney is planning to bulldoze his $12 million, 3,000 square foot home near San Diego, California, and replace it with an 11,000 square foot home instead. And that hurt so bad to leave my home because of one man that's got 15 homes. Mitt Romney is now personally worth somewhere over a quarter of a billion dollars. Mitt Romney's company, founded with some wealthy Latin American investors, is worth $65 billion today. I mean, just look, the man you in, he seems like an all right guy, just look at him. People that didn't know him would think, hey, this guy's okay. But okay, let's look deeper. Let's look deeper in his life. I think he's, he's a money man. And he's gonna look out for the money people. He didn't look for us little peons anyway. He didn't look for us, look out for us. And we're just a little, little group over there. So you put him in in force up there over everything, then what? What's going to happen then? For some of the thousands of American workers he left in the dust, the nightmare never stopped. It's been rough on a lot of people. A lot of lives were ruined. I don't want to ever go through it again. Now Romney says he wants to bring what he learned on Wall Street to the White House. What would his cabinet look like? Who would he put in positions of power around him? I spent my life in the real economy. And I mean by that, I didn't just watch jobs get created and saved. I did that myself. It happened so quickly. Going in, the factories closed. Everybody was fired. Being in the private sector for 25 years, therefore knowing how the economy works, why jobs come, why they go. And that hurt so bad to leave my home. That was our way of life because I'd been there since I was 18 years old. Not just watch jobs being created, but actually creating jobs. He took away our livelihood. He took away 
our futures. You know, maybe it's kind of like the old saying, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's not a very pretty picture, is it? We don't have middle class people yeah, no more. Rich and, poor. rich and poor, that is it. That company ended up closing two plants and laying off three, 385 workers. Uh, you didn't save those jobs, Governor. No, there's no, there's no question. What happened here? We used to have a, a large middle class. We don't have the type of jobs to keep that medium family going. He destroyed a lot of people's lives out there. Bain reaped millions from companies that sent jobs overseas, closed factories, or plunged into bankruptcy. That's what they do. Is it right? No. But it's the way it's done. There you go back to greed. Mm -hmm. It all ends up back to greed. There are a lot of reasons not to elect me. No matter how much they already had, they just should never get enough money. He's more apt to put them out of work than he is putting them back to work. They just don't know how jobs are created in the private sector. That's where I spent my entire career. His job in private business with Bain Capital was to go in and fire people. Most people I know, we're just trying to get by. He's not meaning one bit of what he's saying. Oh, hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment. No, it's not. It's just politics. If you don't like my answer, you can vote for someone else. What do you get out of treating people like this? He is there for the almighty dollar. 25 million people don't have jobs and can't find jobs. And the... Wall Street free! Wall Street free! Wall Street free! Okay, next question. We got a question? A question? Grande fête mondiale. À bientôt. Paid for by Winning Our Future. Winning Our Future is responsible for the content of this advertising and not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.winningourfuture.com